This episode of The Clear Out was recorded on the 25th of May 2022 at home in Wicklow and it is a joyous episode. Joyful. Kalu Kalei. <laughs> What's that from? Anyway, uh, an episode that has joy at the centre of it. It is the first birthday episode of The Clear Out. Yes, The Clear Out podcast is one year old. Hooray! Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to ye. Happy birthday to we. Happy birthday to us and the clear out. So, well done. Uh, I speak about uh, some of the stuff I got up to over the last 11 to 12 months alongside launching and recording the podcast for a year. So the first part of the episode, it's a bit of a bit of a numbers crunch before I get to the, the main focus. And one of the things that had triggered this interest in looking at joy was a little event that, uh, at hashtag blessed at the weekend. And I completely forgot to mention it <laughs> during the episode when I was recording. But very simply... My father and one of my brothers, both Manchester City fans, uh, came over here to watch the final day of the English Premiership season. Um, And Manchester City, as long as they won their final game against Aston Villa, they would be crowned league champions. I was also keeping an eye on my own own team, Tottenham Hotspur, Spurs, to make sure that they... uh, All they had to do was manage not to lose their match and they would qualify for Champions League football next year, the elite European competition. We had to finish in fourth place and as long as we didn't lose our final game, that would be secured. So I had my match on my phone and we had the Manchester City Villa game on the TV. Uh, My father, who is in his 80th year, he turns 80 in a few months, he um there's no guarantee this is the simple truth right and i'm not being maudlin or sentimental or over dramatic there's no guarantee he's still going to be here next year now he may still be with us physically next year but with uh dementia in play it's hard to say if he'll still have the the brain capacity the brain function to take in what's going on but at the moment he's still able to and whatever about what Manchester City represent in terms of sports washing and uh, being a super club with grotesque amounts of money from dubious sources I was happy to I was happy to to sit and watch and hope for a City one just for my just for my my father and City were up against it They were down two goals late enough in the game and the stress levels were high. (laughs) My brother was being completely pessimistic. My father just looked stupefied in his chair. And then suddenly City scored three goals in the space of five minutes. And we just had this electric, euphoric, shared experience of realizing that city had just wrestled the league to and brought it to heel and they took total control and were dominant for the rest of the game uh, and they won it with those three goals and with each goal we all just spontaneously erupted with yells and shouts and roars of joy and it was lovely and the full-time whistles went. My own team cruised to a 5-0 victory, very uncharacteristically. Um, and City were crowned champions. And I was just very happy for my dad, particularly, and for my brother who was here. My other brothers who weren't here are both City fans as well. And I also took joy from the fact that my the brother who was here was so emotionally drained. He was still sort of just, he was just shattered. <laughs> His nerves were shredded after watching the game. And... I enjoyed that as well. I was like, oh, good. 
he gets completely bent out of shape based on uh, the the ups and downs of his team um so that was nice so there you go there's a little a joyous preview um uh, of other moments that i'll be talking about uh in the episode so there you go thanks for listening uh and thanks for listening for the next hour or more to the rest of the episode i don't know why i'm thanking you now um i'll see you there around the corner okay cheers good luck not gonna change my mind the dream behind. Hi, my name is Dara Clear and you're listening to The Clear Out. Welcome to it. How are you today? How's it going? Has May fever got you? And by May fever, I mean hay fever. I don't mean a feverish, ecstatic appreciation of the month that is May in Ireland right now. It's been a funny month a lot of rain i don't like to talk about the weather too much but there has been it's been a very mixed month may not normally so wet to, to you know to my recollection and the uh, the pollen the explosion of pollen in the air has been has been murderous uh, i had to delay recording this episode this morning because i just needed about an hour just to get my my head cleared from the uh, the effects of yeah of, of of a pollen invasion um i saw some guy online was showing a remedy to clear a stuffy nose which involved pulling the nose to one side with one hand and then sticking your thumb into your cheekbone and pushing it kind of in in the direction of your ear or above your ear and i tell you what painful painful a bit of a a little bit of a pressure pointy area on the face the face has a lot of those little spots that can be particularly owy um when when pressure is applied i remember being delighted (laughs) fascinated delighted and excited when um my karate instructor in dublin many years ago showed me this lovely little pressure point just on the the lower rim of the eye socket and you just get your finger in there and a a sharp downward pressure on it is i'm going to use that word again owie not nice anyway there you go so vitamin c taken ginger tea drunk (laughs) um and uh what else what else honey a little bit of honey as well honey I, I i i can't help but think of honey as the pollen coming back to me countering the pollen that's out there from the um, from the old bees thanks bees appreciate all that you do Pre- appreciate all that you do anyway without further ado i just want to say happy birthday to the clear out that's right this week the clear out turns one and it's been a year it's been a year and no matter where you are at this moment you can take a pause and say the same thing to yourself it's been a year since this time a year ago and what has that year been like for you funny times funny times these sort of emerging from the pandemic times and realizing the world is really not in great shape that's my that's my uh, perception of things anyway the more i look at social issues in ireland particularly in the area of property and housing um, and accommodation uh it's it's extraordinarily infuriating and dispiriting and frustrating and yet again i go what like how how hard can it be how hard can it be where is the political will i don't know anyway i don't want to go down that road too too uh too maddening and there's there are plenty of commentators out there far more knowledgeable um in this area than i am so i won't i won't waste i won't waste another breath uh, in this episode anyway no it's meant to be a celebratory episode and 
particularly on the heels of last week's episode where I have to say I <laughs> I grossly overestimated my listeners appetite for white supremacy manifestos and ideologies of racist hatred uh not everyone's cup of tea it would seem and the numbers the numbers came back and they weren't great <laughs> uh i actually thought it was a really good episode i i, I <laughs> sometimes getting into the meat of that stuff i i really i really enjoy it but yeah let's be fair it's not um it's not light entertainment and that stuff is it's heavy it's heavy material and it can be confronting and it's not exactly an easy listen but i would still that 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 said with that caveat i would still say go back and give it a listen because uh there's some interesting stuff there definitely some very interesting stuff about uh white replacement theory and critical race theory and funnily enough that um that podcast i recommended last week if you did listen i was recommending uh, a great podcast called higher learning which is fundamentally a, a black culture podcast uh, you know set you know in the states black american culture uh, fundamentally um which looks you know which looks at a lot of issues around race and people of color and the political and social um permutations and dynamics uh, and flashpoints around that but it, it, it's a it's a very sort of high energy and fun podcast um within that and those guys uh after the buffalo shooting that i was discussing last week were also talking about the uh about white replacement theory which they refer to as the great replacement theory so um yeah we were kind of on the um on the same page or and look again nothing nothing unique about that i'm sure lots of people were thinking in those areas um so as i said that 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 was my confession the 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 listening numbers were not uh we're not breaking any records so i thought i thought this week let's let's not let's not let's not go to anything too heavy let's keep it let's keep it light um and yeah it occurred to me after i recorded last week and having gone into that sort of deep dive uh into the realms of of hatred and and vilification um and victimization and radicalization and i, I was thinking gosh you, you know how how powerful messages of hate can be and how how they're being transmitted um so successfully and after i, I finished recording I just started to obsess. Well, not obsessed. That's probably putting it too strongly. But I, I was, I've certainly spent some time in the subsequent week thinking about the other end of the spectrum. Why, why are we not engaging in a transmission of joy more effectively? Why is that not something that is out there and? infecting our brains and infecting our souls something positive and real and felt and tangible and healthy and loving and positive a transmission of joy and that is that is ultimately going to be the the, the focus of this week's episode um but before before I start noodling in that area, I I just want to quickly quickly reflect on a year of of doing the podcast. Now I know a couple of episodes ago, a, a couple of episodes ago, I was talking about hitting fifty episodes and talking about that as a great landmark and well done me, pat on the back and whatever, grand. Um, but really. I think you know we we take a we take a calendar year, and I am certainly. You know, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say I wasn't a little bit proud of the effort of producing an episode of this podcast weekly for a year. 
Um, so this is episode 53. So I ticked off one every week and every Thursday I've put the, the podcast out. I think once I missed the Thursday release date because of um, because of a power cut. Um, but very, um, very unoriginally, after a year, I find myself looking at the numbers and that is one way of measuring how time has been spent and what has been done what has been produced what has been achieved um and i i record in you know in journals in my diary whatever you want to call it dear diary dear diary today i went for a swim in the sea and it was very very cold I couldn't feel my fingers for an hour afterwards. That kind of thing. So I did just sit down before recording today um, while I was in that little waiting, that waiting room, waiting for my hay fever attack to pass. And I just quickly jotted down only a few numbers, nothing major, nothing major. Um, because I've, I have been sort of busy in other areas as well not just not just the podcast um and this is largely you know largely what i'm going to refer to it's going to be in the area of um physical activity and creative productivity and so since the podcast la- launched a year ago i have managed to <laughs> This seems so unbelievably mundane now that I've now that I've set myself on this path. However, I'll continue. Um, I've been in the the sea or the river, so open water swims or wild water swims, if that makes it sound a bit more dramatic, one hundred and fifty three times. So that's not that's nothing like a daily swim, um, and it's 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 not even as frequent as every other day. But it's not bad, and considering I'm getting in in pretty much all weathers um that has been a staple i have taught over 200 martial arts classes since the podcast launched a year ago predominantly that has been karate mostly that has been karate but there's also been some tai chi and qigong classes uh, as well as some self-defense classes and they are all ongoing so uh, and some of those classes uh, have, have taken place in my daughter's school teaching uh, kids you know intro, you know introductory karate lessons so in the same so in that year over 200 martial arts classes have been taught uh, the rest of them have been taught in my garden outdoors or in, under cover in, in one of the stables here at hashtag blessed um, my own training so my own training I refer to as outdoor dojo so a dojo is a traditional martial arts training hall and do is the way and I think Joe is place so it's like you know the place of the way or the hall of the way and the way is karate the way of the empty hand and so many martial arts traditional martial arts japanese martial arts have this concept so the you know the training hall the, in the name of it it's got that sacred aspect to it and the philosophical aspect to it it's not just a dead space you're there training in the way so when i do my own little routines conditioning karate tai chi in my own training sessions uh, which as i've said many times before typically take place in the early morning and outdoors hence outdoor dojo in the year since the podcast launched there have been 460 of those sessions now that allows for some of those sessions being double sessions yeah uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to end up talking about my um, my categorization system, my classification system for uh, how how I spend my time. Um, I think I've talked about this before. I talk about units, units of wellness, units of health, units of activity. So getting your butt off the couch and 
specifically choosing to do an exercise of some kind or use the body in some way that counts as a unit and a, a unit it's a very inexact science a unit needs to be rough you know it, now the same the swims fall into a, they, they get the, the swims get a, they're, they're an exception to this rule but generally a unit needs to be a minimum of 20 minutes of exercise getting the heart rate going using the body um but it's a completely a completely inexact system because doing an hour of karate you think oh it's an hour of karate that should be three units if it's you know a minimum of 20 minutes uh but no one hour of karate is still only one unit however swimming in the sea in winter and maybe only being in the water for seven minutes when it's really really cold uh we're talking maybe seven degrees that's a unit and i square that away because the effort the psychological battle of getting into that water and the physical challenge um and having you know and, and combined with that sort of mental strength to go i don't mind this cold and i'm not going to panic and i'm not going to hyperventilate and i'm going to throw one arm over the other and keep going and keep myself safe but also get a little bit of a workout in this very cold water it qualifies as a unit okay so there you go so other things could also qualify as a unit like chopping wood or uh mowing the grass in the garden the gardens we have two gardens here at hashtag blessed that's how that's what that's how that's why it's so blessed one at the front one at the back and that's about 50 minutes of work so that's a unit going for a walk is a unit so there have been 61 walks of different durations um over the last year as well i also produced almost 50 pieces for aura the wellness app um meditations uh life coaching reflections uh poems um mostly uh, mostly when i've done poems on the app i've found thematically connected poems by you know well-known poets and i'd record a few of those i think i threw up one of my own or maybe two of my own poems um there as well um but amongst that 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 number of pieces were 16 new um original stories so taking the time to write those and then you know make sure they're make sure they're um appropriate for a, a wellness app and then recording them it all takes time it all takes that creative juice that creative energy uh, i've also been tipping away you know continuing to write poems i threw up some blog posts as well the blog post the the the, the website the clear out dot com where you know which started um about nine yeah nine years ago now isn't it yeah nine and a half years ago nearly um the clear out has kind of died a death um i used to get that's where i used to attract people <laughs> my audience to think pieces and did those kind of confessional um articles that i'd write as i negotiated different areas of my own sort of psychological and emotional well-being but also sometimes social and political issues um but really within i think within two months of launching the podcast i could see the audience dropping away very dramatically from the material i was putting up on the the clear out now i am hoping very soon uh to have a new website where you'll be able to find everything um so the you know whatever the back catalog of material on the website um on the existing website is that'll be on the new one and you'll be able to get the podcast on the new one and you know whatever else whatever else we you know end up putting up there or i end up putting up there so that will be coming so um so yeah like i said it wasn't you know th those were the numbers and there are other numbers as well which aren't quite so relevant but busy all that stuff means time has been spent doing stuff and trying to stay well and trying to stay productive and trying to keep those all all of those different things connected and the podcast is part of that so the the 52 episodes and this the 53rd episode it's all connected it's all connected to the the general application of trying to to live well and 
trying to reflect and trying to bring mind to proceedings, trying to bring that presence of mind, that present application of inquiry, interrogation, exploration to almost all aspects of of living and of what I'm doing and doing it with the the belief or with the faith that it is worth doing for uh, for myself first and foremost and then for the benefits that can be that can be shared I suppose or the 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 belief in the benefit of sharing what I've been doing what I've been thinking about where my brain has been directing itself and you know week on week going through these things and looking at different areas of interest or concern um, areas that are to you know to, to my mind always connected to the daily uh, negotiation of, of life the daily negotiation of getting through another another 24 hours and presenting presenting for more the following day and the day after that and so on and everything that I've been doing over the last year um, has just been a little bit more cohesive maybe for the first time in my life um, and you know of course there are many many <laughs> many 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 areas that can be improved uh, definitely definitely room for further calibration and further application and further tweaks and adjustments um, but fundamentally I have enormous faith in this combination of things that I've been doing um, because I've certainly felt the benefit of f focusing my energy um, in this area which is um, I mean it's quite holistic at the end of the day um, they're all you know everything I'm doing is connected to to being healthy and there's advocacy within that um, and of course within teaching that's a very very direct area of advocacy because you're presenting and demonstrating and teaching something that you value depending depending on whether you it is something you <laughs> it, is, it is something you value but in in teaching martial arts uh, karate tai chi qigong and self-defense i mean that's all stuff i really value and stuff that i've benefited from for um yeah for about 30 years now so uh i wouldn't be doing it still if i didn't think it was worth my while and it is it's a, it's a pleasure to to teach that to to other people and to present it to other people in a way that i hope is uh enjoyable and instructive and illuminating and that's you know the, the, you know, the podcast I'd never I'd never I'd hate myself I'd consider I'd consider it, you know egregiously obnoxious if I was presenting the podcast as something that was designed to teach or instruct um, because there's an assumption then of you know, I'm in a position to share knowledge that is very much not the objective of uh, of what I've been doing here and hopefully um, hopefully that's been clear if you've been someone if you're someone who has been listening regularly this is you know if anything if anything the, the podcast is a it's a grotesque indulgence <laughs> maybe I'll maybe I'll stick that up as the new subheading for the podcast so instead of the clear out wellness with attitude it'll be the clear out a grotesque indulgence 
of one idiot's ego and narcissism. How about that? That's catchy, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, look, there you go. So, um, so happy birthday. Happy birthday to the, uh, the clear out. And if you're one of, if you're one of the chosen few who have been listening regularly, seriously, and with absolute sincerity, thank you. Thank you so much for, for listening, for being supportive, for reaching out with nice comments, nice responses, nice feedback, reaching out with amusement, whatever. It's, um, it's fantastic to get just, I, I respond enormously well to a little bit of feedback and, um, it's, you know, it's just a tiny bit of acknowledgement and I go, okay, I'm not completely insane to be sitting here as I do once a week and talking into this microphone going this, this <laughs> I'm doing some good. <laughs> oh, good luck. Anyway, uh, if you, if you watch, if you keep an eye on them, um, if you keep an eye on social media this week, maybe for the next week or two, I will be sharing. Um, I will be sharing some nice responses that I've been getting from people um, in relation to the the clear out turning one. Um, so yeah, it, and it, it's nice to think I've got I've got listeners tuning in from different parts of the world or downloading from different parts of the world. Um, oh, another another figure another couple of numbers I was going to hit you with before I, I completely abandon the um, the number crunching the uh, point dextery nature of that the um, you know the, the the podcast has had just under 2800 downloads now I'm not a market researcher I haven't a clue how that tracks with other new podcasts I'll just say it's bloody competitive. There's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of very high profile, successful people launching their own podcasts. There's celebrities with podcasts. There's people who really have great, great offerings out there and they deservedly have big audiences and maybe they were known quantities before they launched their podcasts. But it is you know it's a hugely saturated uh market and i you know i i just go okay well look um you know to to, to be a, you know to be closing in on 3000 downloads after 12 months uh with with no um great sort of cachet to to attract people i suppose and no celebrities and i mean i've had I, I, one guest <laughs> one guest in 12 months i'm i hope that will change i'm planning to to bring you know to bring more people onto the show to 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 just open that up a bit more and on honest to god mostly my 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 hesitation in that area is purely technical or techn technological um i mean if i could just get people to you know drop in here and sit down with me and have a chat that would be ideal but i get a bit stymied by um yeah it, it's pathetic it's it, it's 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 a joke and there's no excuse for it i've just got to get get over the um the technology because it's done and lots of people are doing it and that would be a nice extra dimension to what i'm trying to do here um so that that was one figure the downloads for a podcast was quite nice and i'm up to about uh Thirteen and a half thousand um, paid listens on uh, Aura, the wellness app, and that's uh, that's not even a full year yet. That's about eleven months, so that's just been tipping along nicely. I haven't quite cracked the magic formula for that to really give those numbers a, a serious uptick, um, but that is you know that, that 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 is work, and I do like doing it, and I think what I'm putting there is nice. And that's something I think I will be offering on the podcast as well, uh, maybe to my Patreon members that I'm going to be making some of that content um, available to to people who sign up to the uh, yeah the Patreon uh, page for the the podcast. 
um, as a as a as an extra. You might get like a meditation or a story or a bit of life coaching in the mix as well. Okay, there you go. There you go. I mean, what else? I mean, there, there's probably numerous other things I could enumerate. How many times did I make pancakes? Many, 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 many. How many times did I bring my wife a cup of tea in the morning? Many, 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 many. Uh, get my daughter out of bed in the morning? Many, 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 many. The um, the joys of the uh, the domestic the domestic routine. Um, yeah. Okay. So, as I said, as I said at the start, the the main topic for discussion today is the transmission of joy so let's think about that for a second the word transmission moving something from one place to another really yeah now, i'm not talking about transit but i mean you know these are you know trans across transmission um let me interrupt this transmission this broadcast if i think about that word transmission and this you know and this does you know this does recall some of the things I was talking about last week. I think about receiving. What are you receiving? So you think about like a radio receiver and trying to tune into something. And if you think in a traditional radio, um, as, as opposed to like a modern, you know, a digital radio or an online radio, um, you know, the whole idea of turning on the radio and then turning the tuning dial and waiting for the dial to land on a station. So a signal is being broadcast from a radio tower or someplace somewhere. Um, and you're waiting for your radio to, to, to land on that signal to, to receive the signal. And whether it's you're looking for news or you're looking for music or you're looking for a sporting event or uh, a political announcement, uh, a speech from a politician or a head of state. The question is, what can you receive? What can your little radio receive? What are you receiving? And if we think if, we, if, we, if I go back to last week's episode and talking about you know, angry young men being radicalized and their radio receiving a signal of hate, their radio receiving transmissions of hatred and allowing that to to galvanize them into hateful, murderous um, rampages um, and wanting to broadcast them and on you know, whatever i covered it all last week what you know how do we receive how do we receive joy how successfully is your dial tuned to joy transmissions of joy broadcasts of joy signals of joy and I mean, I was just thinking about the obviously there, there, there's huge um, repeated um, advocacy for the pursuit of happiness and happiness as a lifestyle objective, which uh, I think is a deeply flawed, um, excuse me, a deeply flawed model or a deeply flawed uh, template to go happiness is the the you know the end objective i think it's too one dimensional i think um it eliminates the possibility for uh being very functional and content and well and for that to be built around the existence and presence of other emotions that aren't happiness um but it got me I, you know I, I i it got me thinking about this difference you know, what's the difference what's the, what is the difference between joy and and happiness um because you know ha of course happiness is probably you know happiness can be something that's depicted as being more akin to um contentment and 
it can line up maybe a little bit more compatibly with a broader sense of wellness. Um, whereas joy is more of an in the moment thing, um, a response, a, a reaction, um, some, yeah, some way of demonstrating a response to a current situation. And I just found myself wondering, like, is joy not something we should be allowing into our lives? And it's not, and so, so what I'm talking about is not necessarily the pursuit of joy for ourselves. Now, you know, we will, I'll explore that in a second because I mean, that, 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 that'll probably present some, you know, a very obvious, um, it, it could be something around pleasure. It could be something slightly um, hedonistic or certainly hedonism adjacent. Uh, but I was thinking about this and it, and it struck me, it struck me very powerfully the other night. I was watching, um, I was watching a documentary on Netflix called Count Me In. I think that's what it's called. Count Me In. It's, it's a documentary from a couple of years ago, um, which is fundamentally an exploration of and celebration of drummers and drumming. Yes, the musical instrument drums, drummers. And it's about an hour and a half of talking heads, uh, not the band, but different individuals, drummers, male and female, talking about why drumming is so cool. I, I mean, that's really it. There's, there's, there's nothing else. It's so. It's really very. Um, there's nothing exceptional about this documentary. Um, it's, I would say, of mild, uh, mild interest. I mean, you like, you know, if you like music. Um, it's a very innocuous, fun um, documentary to watch. And certainly, certainly, you do get a sense of of the, the joy that the drummers have. You know, when they're talking about drumming um, and, you know, when they're doing their thing and you see clips of them, you know, doing, you know, you know at concerts, live performances, doing what they do so well. Uh, you know, it, it, it can be it can be quite a it can be quite a male macho energy the drumming thing and this this documentary did primarily focus on uh, rock drummers, rock and pop rock drummers. So they're bringing that sort of attitude, that kind of rock <laughs> attitude, a little bit of that kind of you know we're badass, you know we're cool. And yet, that said, they were all, um, you know, almost all of the drummers came across as being really nice, uh, naturally enthusiastic, uh, not cynical or jaded, and all that stuff is nice. And, for, well, for me personally, I like that. I appreciate, I, I, I value that quite, quite highly in people. But in the early part of the documentary, they were showing kind of various clips and there were home video clips, and one of the home videos, and I don't know if it was, if it was um, one of the drummers featured as a child. It was it was a young girl, maybe around ten, and it was Christmas, and this home video showed her receiving a gift, a sort of a medium sized wrapped present, a box, and as she opened it, she realized that the box contained a drum set. And she just started like screaming with delight, screaming with delight. It's a drum set. It's a drum set. It's a, I'm sure when I said drum kit, whatever. But just so, so excited and so, so happy. And grand, that's fine. But then she just like dropped herself on top of the box, draped herself over it and just started sobbing and <laughs> I, I was sitting there watching it going oh 
this is <laughs> this is quite powerful actually this moment where she just like the, the the pureness of the emotion and her pure joy and the sense of this is what i wanted so badly and now i've got it and i'm so ecstatic that i'm overwhelmed and i have to just weep tears of joy over this um this moment and i just thought it was just so beautiful and if that was the only thing i saw from that um documentary i would have been absolutely happy i mean that's fantastic i don't need to see anything else um and i just thought that that was a transmission of joy seeing that it was probably no more than 30 seconds and i got a huge surge of good feeling just from observing that play out and i just thought wow that is absolutely fantastic um and it got me just thinking in this area then this area of where do we perceive and receive joy like externally so i'll give you another very basic example for me i'm up at one end of the house here at hashtag blessed and at the other end of the house i'll hear my daughter and wife messing and i'll just hear them messing you can just you know you hear the energy you get the vibe it's fun it's playful and then the laughter and just hearing them laugh together is joyful now again you're going oh my god this moron (laughs) guess what guys laughter is nice hearing people you love laugh is a good feeling i know it's so so mundanely obvious what i'm saying and yet i'm going to persevere because i do think this is worth dwelling on watching our kitten turn itself inside out in a frenzy of madness chasing a little shred of 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 wool like a plait of multicolored wool and watching the kitten spin around on its back with eyes blazing uh, as it tries to disembowel a piece of wool um, and then drops it and sprints out of the room and then sprints back into the room and does it again and then collapses in a heap. That's joy. Now, the cat, the cat might just be playing out. It's, 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 it's predatory instincts. It's practice for death and murder and carnage. But I tell you what, it doesn't look like that, you know. To, to <laughs> it's just this little ball of fur <laughs> spinning on its own axis at, you know, 300 miles an hour. It's just hilarious. And it's joyful. Um, yeah. So, look, I'm not going to sit here and go through a really boring list of what's joyful and what you know what makes me feel joy but again i think the more the more sort of germane point is are you open to it are you are you receiving i mean that's really it because if i go back and think about last week's topic and talking about these very to my mind incredibly damaged individuals who get radicalized and then go out and kill people um it's profoundly sad and it does make me think what weren't they receiving what you know what positive messages weren't they receiving how did they get sucked down that particular rabbit hole of yeah of hatred and you know to to such an extent that it led to 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 murder to an act of terrorism um so this to me is a fundamental idea of of being well and 
of being balanced this idea of being receptive are you receptive to positivity are you receptive to good things in the world because we're screwed if we shut that stuff out if we just become tunnel tunnel visioned on everything that's broken and everything that's not working and we get stuck in our own sense of of what's not working in ourselves and what's broken in ourselves or what isn't present in our lives or you know any number of things that cause us anxiety or pain or frustration or anger or whatever it might be i think it's so important that we remain open to being moved by by what by the lives of others by the by moments by the available moments of joyousness um that exist all around us and maybe maybe you could describe that as falling into a mindfulness area being mindful of a certain thing placing something in your mind just opening that little window that you know that just just you're just you're, you're just sort of you're, you're you're preparing the ground in your mind in your consciousness to go i'll be receptive to that experience i'll be receptive and i'll let it come in and i'll let it give me a little boost a little injection a little pulse of positivity a little pulse of love and it's almost like it's almost like that there's a a collective beating heart of humanity and if you see a moment an exchange of it, it it's something akin to to grace where nothing is interfering interfering with or tainting or besmirching an essential purity in a, you know in, in a human individual so that girl getting her her drum set um there's such a pure expression of uncynical self in that moment i find that really powerful i mean i find it profoundly moving and inspiring and there's such there's such presence in that moment there's such intense intense but effortless focus of of energy of emotion of expression of experience in that moment and i think it's i think it's something to be cherished and to varying levels i think being present in your own life can deliver that sensation i think being present with another person can deliver that experience whenever you apply yourself to it and just let it be i mean children often naturally have that ability they have that ability to be fully present and it's obviously 
it's rooted in not being mature, not being experienced, not being exposed to all the world is and can be in its very complex and challenging and confronting ways. Children can have this amazing quality of being completely present and in the moment. And it's enormously powerful, in my opinion. And it's something as as adults, it's 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 kind of beaten out of us. And I, I don't mean literally. I mean, although in the past, um, you know, that 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 has been the case. But it's it, there, there's something about the attritional nature of of growing up of entering and negotiating adulthood and of being being knocked around i suppose by the experiences of life all of that over time can basically put you in the dark now i don't mean in the sense of you know being ignorant or unaware but (laughs) it you know it it can remove all the color from your life and there's you know there is there's a there's a, a beatenness in that um you know it's funny i, I was laughing there a, a, a moment ago because i i just had a flash <laughs> and this <laughs> this this shows you the um <laughs> the the lack the utter lack of emotional um and intellectual sophistication that i can that, that i'm capable of of bringing to a, to a topic like this I just had a flash of the the, the children's film, Trolls. <laughs> so, sorry, a few years ago, a movie was made about trolls. Do you remember trolls? These little t- small plastic dolls who, who were nude, but they had, you know, huge uh, tufts of hair. He, you know this, these spiky heads of hair that you could kind of twist and style and manipulate trolls they were little dolls kids toys but they made a movie inspired by those figures a few years ago and uh, two of the main voice talents that were in it were uh, Anna Kendrick that charming American actress and Justin Timberlake uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the singer singer actor dancer triple threat um and trolls is actually a very fun movie and there is there's a sequence in that movie where i want to say princess poppy princess poppy as played by anna kendrick is depressed funnily enough and princess poppy has been the source of all the sort of joy in the troll world um full of fun and radiance and high energy and high jinx and just misses positivity go 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 singing laughing having fun everything is wonderful and amazing and the the story contrives to to throw enough crap in her way that all that natural abundant joy is is drained from her soul and her her all her all, all you know the color literally leaves her body and trolls are very colorful um but there's a sequence where she is completely she's just lost her joie de vivre and has no appetite for life and has admitted defeat and is just in a profoundly depressed state and then the justin timberlake character who all along has been this terrible cynic and grumpy and resistant to the general uh high octane happy philosophy of all the other trolls but 
he's also been nursing this love for Princess Poppy all along. He reaches out to her in this moment of intense greyness. And her greyness is, you know, because it's her, it infects everybody else. So suddenly we're looking at this black and white movie, uh, an animated one. And then Justin, <laughs> Justin Timberlake's character just reaches out to her and starts singing a very slow and lovely um, iteration of Cindy Lauper's True Colours. And what happens is her little love light, her little joy light is ignited inside her. And gradually around this group of depressed trolls, all their little lights go on internally and all the colour comes back until they're all sing, <laughs> singing together. <laughs> and I make it sound really naff, but it's actually cool. Um I'm sorry, that's why I was laughing, because that's that just came in my head. Be and 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 it's clunky and obvious and really literal. <laughs> but sometimes that's how I operate too. Don't overcomplicate it. Keep it simple. The um the transmission of joy. Are you receiving what's been what's available? Are you receiving the signals are out there? The broadcast is worldwide um and i'm gonna give you two i'm gonna give you two more to think about um and one is not as obvious as the other maybe i'll start with that one but if you go online you can seek out and find a 12 year old in palestine who is rapping in english so he's a little Palestinian kid and his name is MC Abdul. Now, if you go and find him online, he I just saw something yesterday and he is uh, he's rapping about the the uh, the political situation um, uh, in 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 Palestine and the the ongoing uh attritional relationship i mean god i couldn't i couldn't put that more euphemistically i mean israel bombing the hell out of palestine and you know apparently still seeing no double standard about that considering the background of what happened to um yeah you, you, look, you know what i'm gonna say what a what a mess that situation is but you've got this little kid in Palestine, walking through rubble, um, and it's not you know it's not it's not staged. It's you know it's Palestine. It's been bombed, and he's rapping, and his lyrics are just about you know houses being caved in by Israeli bombs, and he just wants freedom for the population of Palestine. And there's nothing cute about it, but it, you know it's it's really good. The lyrics are excellent, um, and for a simpleton like me who doesn't listen to rap um <laughs> i can understand everything uh and to, to, as far as i could tell he was really he was really good and you know, that's one of his lines you know he said something about, like you know with the you know with these you know with these you know with these uh rhymes i'm unstoppable um and his evident feel and ability um you know for you know with, with rap is striking and that to me was kind of joyous to have this really articulate 12 year old kid hip hopping and rapping through a destroyed part of palestine with really um astute political and social lyrics i just thought this is absolutely brilliant that's joy it's joy to come across something like that and go Holy hell, this kid is so talented and on point and doing something real and felt. And also he loves what he's doing. Um, it's, it's it, it, yeah, fantastic. So that's one, MC Abdul. Go and check him out. This little cool Palestinian kid who's rapping for the people. Now, another one. And um, 
you're going to have to bear with me here, okay? I'm going to read this one out because this is, again, something I came across yesterday. And once again, I repeat this idea, like, what are you receiving? So I saw this on, I think, uh, probably on Facebook. And Facebook, God, I can't stand it. I hate it. Facebook, it's just the pits. Anyway, whatever. I saw this on Facebook yesterday. Um, so basically, this is a letter, or probably an email, a letter and a response um, to a letter. It's a 10 year old kid writing to Nick Cave as in the Australian singer songwriter Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds Uh, I'm not a Nick Cave fan at all I mean there's one or two songs I can think of he did that duet with Kylie Minogue and then there's that song Into Your Arms which I like but mostly his sort of miserablest aesthetic uh, it it doesn't appeal to me Uh, it never has Um, and I know there's a lot of Nick Cave heads or seed heads or whatever they're called and they really worship at the temple and that's what you know that's what a certain type of musician and lead singer attracts historically um and you know great good you know good for them there's um sometimes you know there's a type of musician and Nick Cave falls into this category there's a type of musician and a type of music um on the kind of the darker edge of of things that really is moving very much in the opposite direction of what i've been trying to celebrate in this episode uh not particularly joyous not particularly colorful um definitely not a joy light being turned on um and not it doesn't lend itself to to primary colors and uh, big hair that you can style um, <laughs> like a kid's a kid's toy and that's never been my thing I've never really been drawn to the the moody dark emotional tormented side of uh, of music of popular music um, I wasn't a, a fan of grunge I wasn't a fan of the Smiths um, I was always leaning more towards uh pop and soul um and i used to i i I certainly was my feeling that i was kind of (laughs) ridiculed and lampooned for my for my for my taste in music when i was a, a teenager uh however so be it it is what it is that's that's what i was into that's what i was into now this kid 10 years old and i'm gonna read what he wrote to nick cave and read Nick Cave's reply, and then we'll discuss. So, this was the kid's letter. I am 10, and have been surrounded by, and listened to your music as long as I can remember. I saw you in Hobart in January 2017, and I'll be there again to see you in January 2019. None of my friends listen to anything cool, interesting, are beautiful how will having your music in my life so early on affect me and have you got any advice for me thank you ptolemy launceston australia so ptolemy that's the kid's name that's p-t-o-l-e-m-y now so so fine so fine so nothing Remarkable about that, perhaps. I don't know. I mean, you, you, you tell me. Here's Nick Cave's reply. Dear Ptolemy, I think I may have already answered your question at the In Conversations in Hobart. If you're the little blonde kid who was sitting on the right side of the hall. I can't remember exactly what I replied, but I thought more about the question after the show. And I remember wishing I had answered it better. Perhaps this is what I should have said. Listening to Bad Seeds music at your age is like having a secret knowledge. 
When I was about your age, I had a secret knowledge too. My eldest brother, Tim, used to listen to a lot of very strange and obscure music, and he passed this knowledge on to me. Back then, I lived in a rural city in Victoria, and it seemed to me that nobody my age listened to the music my brother played to me. As far as I could tell, they all listened to a whole lot of shit. It was like I carried a secret around inside me, a special knowledge about the world that my friends didn't have. It was a secret power. I carried this secret power with me all through my kid years until I went to a school in Melbourne where I met three or four other people who also had this special knowledge, this secret power. These people became my best friends and we went on to form a band and tried in our own way to take this knowledge and pass it on to the world. This secret knowledge you have is a strength that lives only inside certain people. It is a strength that will inspire you to do wondrous things, like write stories, or draw pictures, or build rockets that fly to Mars. It will give you the courage to take on anything that the world might put in front of you. It's a wild power that can be of untold value to the world. Your name Ptolemy is a warrior's name, a boy full of inspiration with a warrior's name. The world is waiting for you. Blow him away, kid. Love, Nick. I think that is amazing. I don't care about Nick Cave's music. <laughs> he can feck right off with it. But that is just one of the coolest things I've ever read. And yes, it is because it's a famous, uh, a famous and massively successful singer, songwriter, band leader, writing to a 10 year old boy and validating him enormously and sharing a personal philosophy. And of course, I love it because fundamentally Nick Cave is saying, the secret power is the stuff that artists and creative people are made from. Great individualists who offer so much of themselves to the world, which I think is a beautiful thing. So that letter, seeing that yesterday online, I thought, my God, it, 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 pure, pure joy in the gesture. Pure joy. You can imagine, again, what I was referring to before, the focusing of that energy, that connection between Nick Cave and that boy in written form and what that might do or have done for that kid. Now, I don't know. I mean, he, he referred in the letter to maybe having met that kid, Ptolemy, before. Uh, I know nothing about him. I don't know what his, <laughs> what his personality is, what his brain makeup is doesn't matter none of that is relevant i mean he, he he could be this precocious git but it doesn't matter taken in isolation just that exchange from an experienced adult to a child is just it's just fantastic and i do think that is a great power when an adult turns their attention fully to a child who is looking for a response and to give that attention to a child in that moment to see them and to let them know that they are being seen that that is powerful it's so fundamental and yes, again, to some of you listening, you might go, it's so obvious. But that is so powerful. It's so profound. And I know, of course, being a, you know, being, being a parent, that the, the, you know, the concerns of adult life and the concerns of the world and everything that demands your attention, it can pull you away from that ability or that inclination 
to being present and to giving your your child the that moment of focus that moment of being seen that they they can so crave and which costs you a minute or two of your time but can be so meaningful to them to show that they're worth being seen to show that they can have the attention for this moment i think that's i, I think that there's you know there are a few greater things you can do um and of course so many adults we're all you know so many of us <laughs> i'm going to throw myself right in there so many of us are damaged children um and i'm saying that without hurling accusations um so many of us do feel like we're damaged children and we still crave being seen because to be seen is to be validated to be seen is to be told you're right to be here you are right to be here and you have the right to be here and you should be here and you're welcome so i don't know that's um that, that's a that's a pretty joyous note <laughs> to conclude i um just so quickly so quickly before i finish i, I speaking of of joy um have you seen steven spielberg's version of west side story it is such a fantastic achievement it is such a fantastic achievement and in the movies probably there is no more visceral expression of joy than that to be found in in musicals um the exuberance of taking emotion and response and reaction and allowing it to explode into song and into dance um that is yeah it's 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 one of the purest expressions of joy you'll find on 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 screen in in my opinion um you, you know you can talk you can talk about other things i mean sports movies have triumphant joyous moments uh as well um hero journeys have that as well uh love stories and sex scenes maybe can also have uh that aspect too but there is something about the the unreality of of musicals that if you go with them and give yourself over to the experience and remove your cynicism suspend that disbelief and just go where it's going to take you when it's done well and of course there are lots of musicals that are mediocre and some modern musicals that don't really want to go there or don't have the songs that will elevate you but let's be 100 percent clear the songs of west side story elevate they transcend they uplift in spite of the tragic notes within the story and maybe because of the tragic notes within the story uh we know we know where it's heading and so the 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 pure the purity and the intensity of the the love between maria and tony the west side stories version of romeo and juliet it's uh it's intoxicating and in in america the song america and what steven spielberg does with it, it i think one of the best song and dance numbers ever put on screen absolutely joyous and infectious and a marvel uh, of choreograph choreography and and staging and camera movement uh just fantastic so if you haven't check it out seek it out wherever you can find it really 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 brilliant and 
for me one of the um the standout moments in in the movie um and it's a testament to the the charisma and the on-screen presence of Ariana DeBose who won the best supporting actress Oscar this year at the Academy Awards playing Anita um the fiery the fiery lover of Bernardo who has a an ill-fated fight um as leader of the uh, of the sharks um there's just a, it's a single moment it's it's a second of screen time where she enters maria's bedroom and sees tony about to leave down the fire escape and it's just a look it's just her 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 she enters the room and the screen just holds on her face for a second and if i i i take that as just like a movie moment of the year just what she conveys in that moment her grief her hurt her anger her rage um a beautiful transcendent chilling moment and and one of many actually one of many in that movie so so there you go there's a recommendation joy joy for me is watching good movies that's one of the areas of joy i didn't i didn't i ended up not revisiting that idea what you know what brings me joy personally that is one of the things uh, to sit down and watch a good movie um and go on that journey that um there are very few things that that hit me the way that do um I might have to revisit I might have to revisit this topic because there's there there are other areas of joy uh in my life that I that I seek out and and welcome in more to the point so there you go I hope you've been receiving this and I hope it has given you cause to inquire um into areas where you might find or experience joy in your life simple things might be simple I have rhapsodized in the past in one of the first episodes i think about the joy of making a humble cup of coffee (laughs) the thrill of that that coffee machine the sound the churn of the engine of that machine and the coffee it produces and that first sip of coffee that's pure joy okay i'll leave you with that happy birthday to the clear out well done me well done you well done all of us you can you can follow me uh on social media the clear out podcast is on facebook instagram youtube um the clear out two that's the number the digit two the clear out two is on twitter you can email me at the clear out live at gmail.com i welcome i welcome your responses i welcome your comments i welcome your inquiries feel free to reach out feel free to recommend the podcast to someone you think might enjoy it and thank you if you're one of those listeners thank you for being here for the year and sticking with me if you want to support the podcast you can there will be a supporter link wherever you're listening to this podcast in the description Uh, or if you want to become a patron a regular contributor of a small sum you can do so at patreon.com forward slash the clear out and i would very much welcome whatever you can give okay that's it i'm gone have a lovely week and i'll be back next week with more from the clear out wellness with attitude or a grotesque indulgence of one man's ego and narcissism you decide okay Take it easy, mind yourselves, talk to you soon. Bye.